Welcome to Calvary Chapel Kid Church. My name is JC Ligar. I will be teaching tonight on the deity of Christ. But before I get started, what do I need to do? And who can tell me why I should pray? So the Holy Spirit can teach you through me. You were close. You almost got it. That's great. Because without the Holy Spirit, guys, what can I do? Nothing. Nothing. So let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you, Father, for tonight. Lord, I'm a little bit under the weather, but I thank you, Lord, that it reminds me that I am not to be content with the way things are now. I'm to look forward to that glorious day when you will change this vile body that is corruptible and give me a brand new glorified resurrected body that will never, ever get sick, never grow old, never die. Lord, look so forward to that day. Father, tonight I need the Holy Spirit to fill me, to enable me, Lord, to teach this class. Because without the Holy Spirit, Lord, there is nothing I can do but make a bunch of noise. And we don't need that. We need the Word of God to be preached with boldness and clarity. And for Jesus Christ to be glorified in the Word. So, Father, bless this night. And everybody said. Amen. All right. So, I've been teaching on the I Am statements of Jesus. Who can remember the first one? Jesus said. I am the way, the truth. No, the first one that I taught on. I am the, I am the light of the world. The second one was, I am, nope, I am the, um, I am the way, the way, the truth, and the light. And no one cometh unto the Father but by me. The third one was, I am the good Father. shepherd. The fourth one was, I am the vine. Thank you. And last week I taught, I am the resurrection and the life. All right. Okay, well, what you do, if you take this home, you go on YouTube, you type in JC Publications, and I post every week what I've been teaching. So that way you can catch up like you were here, and that'll be cool for you. All right, so we go to the very last page, and we're going to read what Jesus has to say. He says, Verily, verily. I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. The he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth, his own sheep by name. So who's the sheep here, guys? We are the, the sheep of the Lord. And Jesus says, I know you by name. It's, it's not like me, where I look at some of you and I'm like, uh, I don't know, what's your name? I have to look at your little tag? No. Jesus knows the numbers of hairs on your head. He's the one who formed you in your mother. He's the one who was putting all your little baby parts together. I mean, he took such delicate care. Uh, he's awesome. Okay. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. So we're to hear the voice of Jesus. How will we recognize the voice of Jesus? It will be word for word what you read in the King James Bible. When you read the Bible, you are reading the words of God. So when the Lord speaks to you, it will match perfectly with his word. And he calleth his own sheep by name 
and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. So again, if you're truly his, guess what? You're going to be following him. And those who are not his, they're like, eh, I'm going to go this way. So you can always tell those who are his. He goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. This is going to be about Lucifer now. So we know that Jesus is the good shepherd, but now he's going to be talking about Lucifer, the worthless shepherd, the one who cares nothing about sheep. In fact, he wants to have you for lunch. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Did that sound nice? No. No. That's why Lucifer has plans for all of us. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy us. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now again, why is Jesus the only way? Because he will save us, and the devil won't. He is evil. That's right. So what about other religions? Do you think other religions? I mean, some of them have good things to say. Do you think other religions can possibly get you to God? No. No. What stands in the way? The devil. Nope. It's a three-letter word that we're born with. Man, that's right. Because, think of it this way. There's a contest to jump to the moon. If you can jump to the moon, I will give you a billion bucks. So you're really excited. You're like, man, I want a billion bucks. So you're jumping. And guess what? I jumped higher than a whole bunch of people. But did I reach the moon? No. And that is religion. Religion is my attempt to do the impossible to meet God's standard of perfection. In religion, I'm trying to jump, trying my best to be good, and I sin. Hopefully God will accept me because I'm really, really, really trying. Guess what? Trying doesn't help if you're gonna fail because the standard of God for heaven is perfection. You would have to be 100% perfect from the time you're born until the day you die. Never having told one lie, never having one wicked thought, never saying one false word, and always doing those things that the Father wanted you to do. If you think you can meet that standard, good luck! I don't know about you, on my best day, my best day, I fail. I do something, or I think something, and I blow it. So again, here we are, we're all trying to jump to the moon, but gravity, which is sin, always pulls you back down. And the higher you jump, the harder you fall. Think about that. Now, guess what God did that is really, really gracious of him? He gave us a rocket, and he called him Jesus. And he says, if you get on board the rocket, guess what? It's a free ride. So by faith, you believe God, say, okay, Lord, I'm going to get on the rocket. The rocket takes you to the moon, and God gives you the billion bucks. Again, salvation is a free gift. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. Like I said, religion is us trying to jump. We're all, we look all 
How silly do you think humanity looks to God from heaven, all of us trying to jump, trying to get to the moon? God is like, guys, please, you look silly, stop. And that's how God feels about religion. Religion is man's attempt to do something, something that is going to really impress God. You know what God says about our righteousnesses? He says the best that we have to offer God in the way of our righteousness is a filthy rag in the sight of God. Again, I use that example. Think of a poopy diaper. A poo-poo diaper. Ew. Stinky. It's so stinky. Do you think showing God, hey, God, look, my best is what I got to offer. You think God is going to be so happy, like, oh, thank you. Good job. Ugh. No, get that thing away from me. Again, God did all the work himself. He came down to the earth as a little baby in Bethlehem, and he lived the perfect life that none of us could. And when he was 33 years old, guess what he did? This is so cool. He took all of your sins, and when he died on the cross, it was as if he was dying as you. And what you deserve, he endured. And when God looks at you because you believe on him, you know how he sees you? He sees all of us as if we lived the life that Jesus did. Everything perfect that he did, God looks at you as if you lived that life. So when God looks at you, he sees you in Christ. Can you please not make noise of the bottle, buddy? Please, that's so distracting and it's very rude. So think of it. God looks at you as if you were Jesus. Because you believed on him. Not because you tried to do good things, but because you believed. So again... When God saw Jesus on the cross, he saw him as if you, or he was you. All the bad stuff that we're going to commit in our lives, past, present, and future. Actually, don't just think of yourself, but think of all humanity. Think about it. The worst terrorist, the most hateful person in history, God saw that person when he looked at Jesus, and he was punishing Jesus as if he was all humanity. But after he died on the cross, and he cr or before he died on the cross, he cried out, it is finished. The punishment that he had to endure at a certain point, he said, okay, done, finished. And Jesus was able to give up the ghost, and God accepted his sacrifice for all of us. And three days later, God raised him from the dead. So now the moment you believe on him and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, think about that. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus. Again, I, I used this example before. If I take a piece of paper... And I write down every filthy, dirty word I can imagine. And I take this piece of paper and I fold it and I stick it in a clean white envelope. And I look at the envelope, what do I see? Do I see the paper with all the bad words? No. All I see is the clean white envelope. That is Jesus. And that is us in Christ. Again, think about it on Judgment Day. Do you want to be in Adam? Because when we're born, we're born in Adam. And all the sins of humanity is on us. And we're going to stand before a holy God like that? Not me. When I stand before God, I want to be in Christ. Not in Adam. I don't want God to see any sin. And because of the work of Jesus, God will never see any sin upon me. And that just blows my mind how beautiful and gracious is the salvation of God. Because think about it. 
Do you think Jesus would have endured the cross if all sin was not paid for? If there was one sin that was left out, think about how sad that would be. Because humanity would commit that sin. Because <laughs> think about it. In the Garden of Eden, how many sins were there that could get Adam and Eve evicted from Eden? Well, how many sins was that that they committed? One. one. All it takes, guys, is one sin to get humanity expelled from Eden. How tragic that is. But guess what? By the righteous act of one man, Jesus Christ, all of us can be accepted in the beloved and be able to set foot in heaven and live. Like I said, the holy purity of God. And when we see him, guys, guess what? He will be looking at us with a smile because who's he going to see? He's going to see Jesus when he looks at us. Like I said, the perfect life he lived is imputed unto us. Wow. I don't know if you're understanding how cool that is. When Jesus got baptized, do you remember what the Father said? This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Do you think God could say that about any one of us without Christ? You are my beloved child that I am well pleased on. Because of one sin, if we committed one sin, God couldn't say that. Because he's holy and he's just and he has to judge sin. But because salvation is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his grace, all of those of us who believe on him, we are in Christ. And I don't know about you, I can breathe a sigh of relief because I'm not accepted by me being good. I'm accepted in the beloved, the beloved being Jesus Christ. I think that's pretty cool. And again, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall go in and, out and find pasture. What that means is he is the only door. Like, think about it. How many keys are in the world? 150, 20, a lot. A million. But guess what? How many keys will open my apartment? One. Right here. But everybody says, wait a minute, I have a key and my key looks better than yours. I don't care how it looks. There is only one key that will unlock my apartment. And when you get a copy, it's um, easier. Yeah, you can get a copy. I'm just saying. In the same way, though, only one key will unlock the gates of heaven. His name is Jesus. Amen. So do we have any questions? Okay, baptism is something you do after you believe. Okay, think about it this way. The thief on the cross next to Jesus. What, what did he do? He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Did he yell, quick, somebody, give me some water. I need to be baptized. He didn't get baptized at all. He's just a way to look at it that you are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest somebody would boast. Again, I'm going to heaven not because I got baptized or because I read the word of God or because I preach the word of God. I'm going to heaven because I believed on Jesus Christ. Now, after you believe, yes, get baptized. You get a question. Uh, um, how did Jesus Huh? Well, I use that as an example. You know, that's just me being an exemplar. Okay, you gotta. Yeah, well, we believe that God is a trinity. 
Think about it this way. In one family, you have a husband, you got a wife, and you got a child. The three are one family. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, I got that. I got that. In America, you got one country. How many states do you have? 50. 50 states. Guess what? Two of them are not even connected to the Alaska continent. Alaska and Hawaii. Alaska and Hawaii. Very good. So those three are one country. Isn't that cool? You got time. Past, present, and future. You got matter, which is liquid, solid, gas. You got uh, space. You got length, you got width, you got height. The three are one. Let's see, what else we can think of? An egg. You got the shell, the yolk, and the white. Yeah. Three or one? There you go. Uh, let's see what else. Who can think of something else? This church. You got one church. How many classes? Three. So you know, you see how what I'm saying here? You can have one thing, but with a bunch of things in the one. In the same way, we got one God who is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, again, a lot of people make this mistake. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. They are three separate, but one in essence. And again, if you can wrap your mind around that, I'm very impressed, because that would make you in a realm that I can't even think of attaining to. Will we understand everything when we get to heaven? We're going to go, oh, I get it now. Well, here on earth, we're going, I don't understand, but I believe it by faith. So we're going to go with that. So you guys have been awesome. We're going to close in prayer. And we're going to worship the Lord. You guys are wonderful. Uh, next week, guys, I want you guys to study. I'm going to be giving away cash prizes. Who likes cash? Me! I'm going to be asking questions. Give me an I am statement. I'm going to expect you guys to know it. I'm going to be asking, what does it mean to be omnipresent? I'm going to expect you know the right words. What does it mean to be omniscient, omnipresent, immutable? So, okay. I'm giving you advance warning. I'm going to have a nice bundle of ones and I'm going to be tossing them out to those. more than one? Yeah. So, I want you guys to impress me next week. All right? Because Jesus is a rewarder. So it's nice to be rewarded when you pay attention and you study okay. and learn the Word of God. All right, guys, let's pray real quick. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we thank you that you did the work necessary for salvation. Father, we want to worship you now, and we want to lift up the name of Jesus. We want the Holy Spirit, Lord, to fill our hearts with love and joy and peace in God. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.